Hello viewers, SuperGT here. Welcome back to another video. Thank you for joining me. So of course, Gran Turismo Sport, we are here at Red Bull Ring. Now the first thing I want to point out really is the uh, the practice I was putting in here did for the race itself. So I did a, did a grand total of six laps, which is quite a lot for me. But each lap got slightly quicker each time and the consistency was there, which really set the framework for this race. And it's, it's more practice than I normally do. There is the lineup. Uh, not the grid, we haven't done qualifying yet. Uh, quite some big names in here. So never going to be an easy race when uh, we have some of those bigger names. So qualifying first up on the medium tyre. So this is a theme of the season really. The fact that you can choose two compounds of tyre. And of course in qualifying going for the soft compound which is the medium in this case. So through turn one. And uh, this is the line that you're going to be seeing people take. Now you go over the over the rumble strip, over the big sausage, sausage of doom. But as long as you stay kind of on the bottom third of that Austria flag on the exit turn one, then you're okay. Penalty zones, there's the first one. Now penalties are going to be absolutely crucial, as they normally are, but I think it's even more important now with this new system with the penalty zones that you don't get a penalty. The, you know, the penalties are more severe now technically because you have to serve them at a certain place, which is almost always at the start of a straight which just merges your momentum and especially if you do it on that one you can lose like five gazillion positions the second penalty zone is through this right hander here so there's two on the circuit is it here? yes it is here there it is so there's two which is a little bit unusual normally it's just one but that's a kind of a reminder maybe that there there's going to be a lot of penalties around this track it's historically a quite a notorious place for penalties aka penalty city call it. Okay, coming around the final turn, uh, going across the line and we actually crossed the line with one second remaining, so I actually get another lap, uh, because as long as you start a lap, then you can complete it. Uh, so I set a 129.989, just dipping below 90 seconds, and my my next lap here is slightly slower, just about 10 slower. But that's kind of a good thing, because the, there was tyre wear, so I, I'm quite pleased with that lap. So here's the grid, quickly. The middle of the grid, anyway. So the guy in 5th, 29.7, just look how close these lap times are, like 29.8, 29.8, and 29.9, uh, honestly, in the middle of this pack, it was ridiculously close, so from like so from about 5th or 6th to 7th, or from about 5th to about 13th, where I am here, it's honestly like 2 temps, it is ridiculously close, or from 14th actually, he's, he's very close behind me. So that kind of... Um, sets a precedent here that it's going to be a very very close fort race in uh, this mid pack and hopefully we can see uh, hopefully you can see me kind of make some progress through it away we go the race is underway 12 laps here red bull ring let the games begin up into turn one and let's uh, just try and hope for a clean run I actually just grazed the back of the supra and the car's under uh, i was gonna say under control really not under control it's out of control I managed to recover slightly, and a guy two positions ahead, with three positions ahead now, with the penalty ready, and he's going to have to serve that as we come through here with that uh, the yellow bar just filling up, up the inside of Adamore, into turn two, kind of not the cleanest move, but we get through, and uh, there's Cosmic serving his penalty, and another person serving his penalty, and another person serving his penalty, so we're going to gain three positions there, as a result of sort of the chaos there through turn one, people getting penalties left, right and centre, and we gained three positions out of it, and ultimately just managed to keep our position ahead of Adamor, who qualified 14th, I was 13th, so we've both gained three positions at this at this point here. Okay, so lap one, that's gone rather well so far, as long as I can keep up that kind of good momentum, then hopefully we'll be in for a good race. The key, as I've said, is avoiding penalties, that is number one priority and then number two is don't get sent to the realm of shadows hopefully that won't happen either so through the second to last turn and then into the final one there's a big group up ahead and the main thing here really is actually the guy in eighth got a, pe uh, got a penalty we have to take note of that the main priority here really is just try and get away from the person behind and um, try and make some progress forwards so you don't have to defend and lose further time Okay, through turn one, we've done that nicely. In fact, I think two people ahead have got penalties. So this could be quite tasty as we come through turn two. 
Slipstream is important around this track, I think. Uh, especially this straight here. It is a fairly lengthy straight up into a very good overtaking opportunity. Breaking just before the 100 board. Two guys have got penalties up ahead. Let's see how many we gain out of that as we come out of turn two. On the throttle, the BMW uh, doesn't lose too much time. That guy there do, uh, loses a lot of time. I'm going to go up into eight. Going to go for the gap. It wasn't quite there. I thought it, I might have just been able to get through that gap. I had the momentum over the guy ahead with the Supra, but couldn't quite capitalise fully. Do get ahead of the BMW, but I have to settle here into eighth. And um, the GT Bocca driver there actually getting someone in between us. I was, I was fairly evenly matched with him for the first lap. I, I don't want to let him get too far away. And actually the guy ahead now with a penalty. Is he going to serve it here? No, not quite. I think uh, we have to wait until the other penalty zone. I don't think uh, the game quite recognised it quite in time. So through the second to last turn towards the final one once again. Can we just get onto the back of these guys? I think I've just lost a little bit of momentum. It's actually really difficult going into that second to last turn because the sun is right in your face and uh, you're looking up at the brake boards. The brake boards are up in, like, they're up above you, as you can see here, into turn one. So it's really difficult to see them sometimes, especially uh, with that sun into the second to last turn and with uh, all the data above each car. You can see as we come up here into turn two, uh, it's really hard to see the brake boards on the left-hand side because of all that information. It's, it's kind of blocking the view. It can be quite tricky to see. Above the inside of the Toyota, up into sixth place and uh, that's a really good return so far and I have to tuck into that slipstream the gap ahead uh, of fifth fairly large at this point here and really I've just found myself in this position as a result of capitalizing on other people's mistakes lots of people uh, making mistakes getting penalties and it, it kind of proves if you just don't do that yourself then you're going to be okay so winding round uh, turn three and four into five Oh, this is four, sorry. Coming down here, uh, just scanning the head, just looking at that gap between third and fourth. Not very, t not very big. They could be fighting at some point soon. Hopefully they will, and uh, they'll, they'll start losing time. First and second are quite far gone. And actually, TS Racing Snake, who was on pole, uh, he hasn't actually turned up. I think he's been disconnected in some way. So he's, um, his internet has absolutely bottled it at the crucial moment because he set a really good lap time in qualifying and uh, may well have been in for a race win but um, his internet's just died on him at the crucial moment so unlucky for him uh, he's lost in my game though I'm going to gain I mean I'm easily going to gain a position out of that he was always going to finish ahead of me most probably okay just losing losing track now with uh, the slipstream of the guy ahead it's just opened up a couple of attempts there 0.8 the gap not enough for slipstream I do need to kind of get back into that kind of range if I want to uh, have ambitions of overtaking him. Well, the guy in fourth has a penalty, not much, 0.4. I would actually say that you probably lose about double what the penalty is. If it says 0.4, you probably lose about 0.8 because of the momentum that you're going to lose down the whole straight. So now, Olympic star Jim there in the Viper in fourth is going to have to go defensive against the uh, 911 up ahead, which is good news for me. Let's see if that kind of is going to be the case. Now, the main thing. I really recognise in this race, which is I think one of my weaknesses that I've said many times, is uh, driving on warm tyres. I think sometimes I get kind of drawn in too much and I, I keep trying to hit the same brake marker throughout the race even though my tyres are wearing out. You do need to kind of change your braking points as, as your tyres wear out you need to brake earlier uh, for sure and I think I was doing that a little bit better here. It's one thing I was managing a little bit better than I normally do and perhaps that is what is paying dividends here which is why I'm in such a good position uh, sixth which is uh, to be fair it doesn't sound that special but in, in such a quite high quality uh, lobby I think that's good for me and normally when I'm qualifying 13th I think I'll do well to finish in the top 10 big slide on the exit of turn one and it, look, it was looking good for a moment there I was looking like I was getting a lot closer to the guys ahead but now I'm on the back foot immediately against the BMW behind. Go semi-defensive, not too much. You see him just poking in there for a split second. We've hit the apex nicely, but we are now on the back foot. And uh, the guy behind in the BMW, actually we should be okay into turn number three. And just scanning ahead again, the Viper 
He's he he's really on the back foot. If I think I'm on the back foot, then Wipe on the back foot. He's going really defensive at this point in the race, which again is good news for me. As I've just lost some momentum. David Perel there in eighth. He's recovering from a bad qualifying session and, and undoubtedly a very quick driver. If you haven't seen his channel, then have a look. He's actually a, a real life GT racing driver. Races across the world in real life, you know, in real life in GT cars, and he's very, very fast in this game. And uh, disappointing qualifying for him, qualifying I think about 15th or something. So expecting him to come flying through the pack at some point, and he's uh, making his progress now. Okay, so Olympic star Jim in the Viper goes into the pits, end of lap 5, that's very early. Uh, perhaps uh, really not do, uh, dealing well with tyre wear, scissors on the medium tyre there, which perhaps wasn't the right choice. I think the hard, two stints on the hard is the right choice for this race. But um, we'll see how that pans out. Into turn one, definitely got the gap down now, which is a kind of a good thing. You see they're, they're swarming all over behind. So Olympic star Jim and the Viper kind of slowed up the, the 911 ahead, which is good news for me. Uh, kind of got a free game out of nothing. And actually the Lamborghini in third isn't too far ahead. Into turn two, BMW up the inside and David Perel also throws up the inside. Double lunge on these two guys. And actually that's opened the gap right up. I was really getting caught there very quickly, and they were very close. Look how big that gap is now, nearly two seconds, or 1.7 the gap backwards now. So that's really helped, actually, the, both of them sending it up the inside from about two miles back. That's actually helped me out massively. Now I can kind of uh, focus on going forward, so I don't really have to worry about going back, uh, looking backwards now. Uh, the gap actually now 2.1 seconds, oh, 2.2, it's opening up. I, th I think David Perel's gone down to 8th as well, so uh, some sort of incident for him. And, uh, well, looking ahead, 3rd place is on here, 3rd is on, definitely. And I think 4th uh, is a, definitely a realistic game as well. Uh, ideally, don't want to go any further backwards than this. Actually, interestingly, the 911 head stays out. Uh, halfway into the race, of course, with our quick maths, 12 divided by 2 is 6. We're, in the, uh, we're at the end of lap 6 now. It's the optimum place to pit, presumably, if you're on, if you're going to match uh, both your stints with the same time, which I am here. I'm going to go on to the hard, from the hard. In we go. Off go the old, on go the new, and away we go. And not having to worry about fuel, as we never have had to in this season. So there goes Olympic star Jim, in sixth place, in the Viper. And he's going to resume just behind the Lamborghini. You might have just seen that. It's very close between them. And I've come out just behind French driver in uh, Nissan, I think it is. And, uh, well, that... I'm not sure if he has... I don't think he's pitted. We're going to see exactly whether, whether that is the case or not in just a moment. Whether or not he starts sliding all over the place. Okay, so this is interesting at the moment. So the leader is the guy... is the 911 that I was chasing. And I'm not sure if he's going to try a no-stop. I, I don't think that's a good strategy. I think he would be very brave to try that. He is 14 seconds ahead of me. So he's got six laps to try and keep you know, two seconds a lap. But by the end of the race, his tyres are going to be absolutely shot. And you see here, this uh, actually a BMW driver here, struggling for grip. And he's actually moved over to the left-hand side to let me go. Which is actually uh, probably the right thing to do. He, he's not going to be able to fight me off until the end of the race. He lets me go, that's very good news. Zero time loss there. Absolutely brilliant news. And actually the leader's gone in. Okay, so that's interesting. He's on the hard tyre. He's tried to maybe go for an overcut. He'll have uh, better tyres throughout the second stint. We'll see exactly how close it is. Still monitoring that fight up ahead between the Viper and the Lamborghini. I think I've actually edged slightly closer to the Lamborghini overall. There is the red car coming out of the pit lane. You can see him there on the right hand side of the screen. Coming through turn one, how close is it going to be? It's going to be very close, I think. And he is going to settle in just ahead. And he's, done, he's actually had quite a good in-lap there, considering he was on older tyres and I had the undercut against him. I've got the slipstream, though. He's gone defensive, pulls over to the right-hand side. I've gone left into turn two, breaking on the correct marker just before the 100 board. And we're going to filter in just behind, in sixth place once again. And the race is on here for fifth. And potentially, I think we could still definitely go for one more than that and get another position. I think that Viper is there for the taking. Down into turn three. He's on the inside line and he's got the job done. Has he? Yes, he has. Just settles in ahead. 
Okay, I'm, I'm quite happy at this point here, really, just to work together and try to reel in that the Viper, possibly the Lamborghini, although that gap is fairly large. I think the, the Viper's definitely on the back foot. We saw it in the first stint, wasn't racing particularly well, and he's not in the slipstream of the Lamborghini anymore, despite being there at the start of the lap. He's already lost quite a fair chunk of time so far. And look behind, Deadly Monkey 2000, he started about 16th or something. And David Perel, he's still coming back for more. Uh, we mustn't discount these guys, they're in 1.3 seconds behind. Actually, that gap has come down. It was about 2 seconds when the BMW was there. And just scanning behind again, uh, yeah, we definitely mustn't get uh, careless at this point. Because we're still going to lose positions if we make some crucial mistakes here. So it's definitely a tough race at this point. Could gain some, but could easily lose some as well. But let's see how this one goes. A couple of laps left, four laps left at this point. Or under four laps left. Tuck into the slipstream. I'm thinking about the move. I'm not going to go for the full slipstream because I want to kind of just take the normal breaking point. And again, this is another thing you have to really consider. When you're in the slipstream, you have to judge your breaking point as well. That's another factor you have to throw in there. As your tyres are wearing, you have to brake earlier. As you're getting in the slipstream more, you have to brake earlier. So these are so many things you have to kind of juggle as, as the race goes on and it all, it's all changing throughout. And uh, scanning behind, I think there was a penalty for one of the two drivers. Couldn't quite tell which one it was. Uh, dead, probably Deadly Monkey as he's uh, been displaced. David Perel now back into seventh. So he's coming back again for a second attempt. Maybe not going for a, a savage dive bomb, a dive bomb this time around. Okay, so this, this race is definitely... The, the shape of the race is shifting. And uh, the Viper is definitely now fighting backwards rather than forwards. You see it really going semi-defensive. And it's so hard to spot the braking point into there. Normally, I'd say halfway between the 100 and the 50 is where I'm trying to brake. But it can be so hard because of the sun. Maybe I do need to go and chase cam or go and cockpit view. And get that sun visor out and wear some shades. Okay, Olympic Star Gym defensive into turn one. And this is a risk here because you can have he could overtake on the outside, but he doesn't want to do it. And the Italian's actually been displaced here. I've actually got the inside on the way out of the turn. So he, he had the left-hand side. This guy kind of lags for half a second. I didn't quite know what he's going to do. So I'm going to move to the left-hand side. He's gone defensive. He's going to try and fight for his position until the end. I suppose there are only two and a half laps left. He's looking in increasingly unlikely that third place is on here. But uh, fourth place is more than likely, at this point, going to be our best uh, opportunity of this race into the slipstream once again i did hit him on the way out unfortunately and it, it killed my momentum around the outside i forced him narrow and he's going to go deep into the turn i've got the cut back and i'm up into fourth place i've got the inside line for this turn and i'm going to slot in ahead nice stuff indeed we have to go semi-defensive here and the benefit of the chase game you can see exactly where he is you can see that he's right behind me so i went defensive and he's gone wide and i've immediately gained a couple of attempts Okay, so that lap has gone really well for me. Turn one, it looked like uh, the 911 could have gone around the outside. You can overtake there, but then you get a penalty if you do it sometimes. So that's the risk, and I think that's why he cut back for the normal racing line, or the normal, or sort of sticking to the actual race track, and uh, kind of killed his momentum. So that's why I went past him at the start of the lap, and then the Viper going defensive, I kind of forced him narrow, narrower than he would have liked, and he kind of misjudged the braking zone. Okay then, we have two laps left, I have a 0.6 gap to the 911, who for the most part of this race has been ahead of me. And potentially, we can see we can see the Lamborghini isn't too far ahead, two seconds. If I can maybe gain a little bit on that and put the pressure on, he might make a mistake at the end of this race. So with two laps left to go, still you see they're missed, not quite misjudging the breaking point, actually hitting the apex nicely. We're judging it very well actually and that's the thing i was very very much pleased about in this race not quite a full-on chase cam uh, controller new so it's actually possible so i did ask that question should i move to the wheel but it's actually definitely possible if i start thinking and concentrating properly then it's more than possible to do good things on the controller a little bit wide through that turn so that's a hint of a mistake the gap is 1.2 though to the the italian behind and uh, at this point here, I'm actually the highest placed 911. The guy in the lead is, oh, I can't even remember, I think using the Viper. Going second to the Mercedes, going third to the Lamborghini. Therefore, I'm the highest rated 
or highest placed 9-11 at this point in the race, which is quite good. As there's quite a few of them, I think there's about 8 or 9 of them in the race. Second to last turn, into the final one, penultimate lap. We have one lap left to go. Can I keep fourth and potentially maybe get third, although he's still two seconds ahead and he's going to have to make quite a significant mistake. Uh, maybe get a penalty for me to actually overhaul that. So through turn one, gap 0 0.8. Just trying to keep it nice and steady. The car wanted to slide out, almost getting a penalty. You go four walls over the grass on the exit there, you do get a penalty. Just avoid it. He's actually 0.5 behind now. He's within the slipstream range, which is not good news. And I just, just hit my marker, hit my breaking point. And we're going to go a little bit wide, sliding through the turn. We've got the job done. And on the way out, actually the gap is increasing. So he hasn't actually had a good run through that turn. He's actually on the back foot now. Deadly Monkey, my fellow Brick, can actually put him under some pressure for that fifth position. And uh, hopefully lose the, lose the pair of them some time. And I'll buy me some time to get away. Although that isn't actually the case. 0.5 the gap. He's still very close. And as long as I kind of keep it clean, I should be okay from here to the end of the race. With that Lamborghini now streaking away. 2.2 the gap. Looking forwards, I don't think I'm going to be able to overhaul him for the end of the race. First and second are coming through the last corners now. They are that far ahead, 15, 16 seconds ahead of me. But I think I've done a, a nice race at this point here to get through to fifth. The guy behind is very close. I've actually braked a little bit too early for that turn. I couldn't quite, again, see where the hell I was going. Down to the final corner of the race, 0.6 the gap. And we're going to get the job done. To come through to finish fourth and honestly I was really pleased with that result there we go not a single penalty in that whole race and I think to be fair the main reason I did so well is because I avoided penalties whereas most people were getting them very early in the race and that kills it just kills your race if you get a penalty early because you lose so many positions and there is final confirmation of the result 5200 points overall I think I moved to 59th in in the region so that's not too bad overall. I think I could, if I have a couple of really good rounds, I could move into the top 30 if I do, if I do well. But that is it. David Perel with the faster lap overall. So perhaps a mixed race for him. But um, fourth place, I'm really pleased with that. Nine positions gained. I hope you enjoyed the race as always, guys. Let me know your thoughts. I shall see you next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.